On this week's episode, I'm joined by Stefan de Moraes. Stefan is the founder of Indico Capital, a leading venture capital firm. He's a podcast host, he's a web summit speaker, and he's just a, just a general, really busy, busy guy. And after living and working all over the world, Stefan came back home to Portugal 10 years ago, where he's been living happily ever since with his wife and his two boys. We discuss, amongst other things, what has been attracting people to Portugal for the last decade or so, some of the changes that Portugal has been going through with tech startup, with tourism, and how it's managed to and hopefully will continue to maintain its identity, essence, DNA, and, uh, and values. We discuss what Stefan appreciates about his country, and with such a busy life with travel and business, how he just appreciates and enjoys the simple stuff. For those of you listening, head over to our YouTube channel to watch some of this episode. And for those of you watching, click down below and subscribe. And for the full podcast episode, go to Google, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And now over to my conversation with Stefan. Welcome back or welcome to another episode of Portugal, The Simple Life. And I'm honored to be joined here by Stefan de Moraes. Stefan, hi, thanks for being on the podcast. Bon dia. Thank you. Great to see you. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, Stefan, why don't you start off by just telling us a little bit about you? Well, I'm almost 50. I'm married, have a couple of kids, 8 and 10 years old boys, um, big time surfers like me. Okay. I'm very lucky that they that they like the sport that, I, that I've been doing for almost 40 years and they're very good at it. They're good students. I'm a venture capitalist, so I invest in technology. And apart from that, I know I graduated from Harvard Business School. Originally, my undergrad was uh, in engineering, so I'm an engineer with it, and I did an MBA. I lived a little bit all over the world, uh, also in London, but in South America, in Africa, in Asia, in wow. Paris, in Spain, you know, a good 10 countries. And uh, now I'm here in Lisbon, and I love it. I mean, um, obviously, like you mentioned, you know, Lisbon in the last yeah 10 years more has become really really well known and sought after throughout the world well, i mean what do you think the change has been because like you said it's it's always been there the blue skies have always been here the the culture and the people have always been here what do you think has been the shift in the last in the last decade that has brought more people here and i think that there was an, a, an artistic avant-garde movement that that discovered portugal we've always had incredible artists street artists architects and so on and i think it started like that there were a few uh, sort of design and art, um, um, you know, events that happened throughout the years that put Lisbon on the map. And so I think nowadays you have a mix, a blend between the traditional and the and the super modern and super sophisticated. And you have probably, you know, you still you can still find an amazing meal for for seven euros on the outskirts of Lisbon, but you can also find an amazing meal for you know without wine for like 200 euros per person so i think you have everything now um with the arrival of you know digital nomads and lots of entrepreneurs and with this the tech scene that i'm part of having grown so much in the last 10 years you also have this vibrancy of a young city that has lots of people having fun um but you use the term genuine when you spoke about what people were looking and discovered in, in Lisbon and, and, and in Portugal, in the wider Portugal as well. What do you mean by that? Are you talking about authenticity? Are you talking about a, a, something that's a bit more unique in terms of what people were experiencing in their own capital cities, their own countries? Um, what, what do you, what can you unpack that a little bit, the, that term genuine that you, yeah. that you use? I, I think it's a lot of, to do with authenticity. I think it, it, Partially, it has to do also with the fact that it's still not a corporate, a totally corporate-driven div- country. Mm. So you have all these little businesses, you know, the majority of businesses in Portugal are, you know, mom and pop kind of businesses, right? They're yeah. small businesses, micro micro companies below 10 employees. So you have partially, it's not the, the nature and the fabric of the of the economy is is very sort of family-driven. Uh, the culture is also family driven. So I think some of the sort of old traits of and all kind of like old time values of European society that 
partially have been lost for a number of reasons in other countries, um, are still alive here. Um, not saying that they're alive and well, but I think it's still a very genuine, authentic, family-driven type of country. Hardworking uh, people are humble. Um, the level of education, by the way, rose dramatically in the last 40 years. We now have, you know, the 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 average education level of of the young population now is even is higher in Portugal than even in Germany in the in the mm. compared cohort. So there's been tremendous changes, but some of the values are still here, and we obviously hope that that stays that way because that's part of the of the reason why Portugal is so interesting as a destination and has a a place to raise your family. I mean, why do you think we've managed to retain those things? And those parts of our our culture and our DNA in Portugal. One of the one of the things that people notice is that people are, in general, there's all sorts of good and bad people everywhere, of course. But in general, people are friendly, naturally friendly. Not just because they're trying to sell you something. They might do, of course, you know, if you're a tourist. But but because people are generally friendly. Actually, more friendly towards the foreigners than towards the other each Portuguese, other each other. Right? Yeah. Uh, so I think we never got this, this sense of, you know, we're the, you know, the biggest ever and we rule the world and that kept us on, on an even keel. And I think that, you know, it's, um, it's a characteristic that has been, you know, ingrained over, over centuries of, of hardship. Um, is this something that we're able to rise to as a, as a country where we're able to say, okay, we're going to progress, we're going to grow, we're going to improve, but we're still going to keep those core things that are important to us as a, as a nation? Number one, one of the revolutions, and I alluded to it just, just a little few minutes ago, that happened was in the education sector. We know there's a huge progress in education. And when I came back to Portugal 10 years ago, I saw for the first time a generation that wanted to be really the best in the world in at what they're doing, kind of like Ronaldo, but in tech and in software and in other in artificial intelligence and stuff like that. So that's that's positive, and I think these people have the sophistication to try to blend what is you know the best that they got from their experience, but also with their with their tradition in general. I'm based on the the Silver Coast, which is north of of Lisbon, yep. uh, Nazaré. I don't know if you've <laughs> have you surfed Nazaré. I have surfed Nazaré. Yeah, you have you've done it. I've done it. Yes, a big so, one. How, how big? What's the biggest wave? I think five, six meters, something like that. Okay, that's yeah. still pretty big. That's still it's, it's no it's it's no Garrett McNamara, but it's still pretty big. No, I mean I'm I'm no Garrett. I know Garrett. He's a great. He's an incredible guy, and I know yeah. all the other big wave surfers. And one day, yeah. one of them, Nick Van Roop, said, "Oh, come Nick, over. Yeah. It's great for you. It's a small waves. Well, it was you know size of a building for me, <laughs> but it was small for him. So it's all relative." Um, but what tips would you give to to people from all over the world? We have listeners from almost every continent um, about, you know, just some things that they should be aware of if they want to integrate, if they want to become part of a community here, what would you recommend? But they, you know, the kids, they integrate, integrate pretty easily if you put them into the right school, right? I wouldn't say that, you know, if they are, if, if, if they only speak English, of course, they have to go to an international school. But quite frankly, every kid picks up Portuguese pretty easily if they're if they're young or even if they're teenagers right so i think that's an obvious it's a little bit harder for the parents but i would definitely make the effort if you're going to stay for a few years at least i definitely make the effort and 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 part of that is not only getting a coach part of that is actually trying to get portuguese friends right the portuguese are friendly but to become friends is a different step right so i think that it and people are busy everybody's busy you know it's not portuguese or not everybody's busy with their own stuff but I think that you actually have to make a, a, a conscious effort of reaching out, inviting people to your home and just be friendly and natural. And, and you know, there will be, a, you know, a new friendships will, will come about. I think, you know, learning also about local clubs, local activities, community driven initiatives and just being part of that. I think you naturally become Portuguese basically or a little bit Portuguese and that really helps because you you get the full richness of being in another cultural environment it doesn't need you doesn't mean that you have to stop being 
whatever you are, where, yeah. where you're coming from, but I think it just makes you a, a much better person. Um, what are the things that you really appreciate and, and that you think are quite unique about our country? I think one of the great things is that it's, um, it's a fairly concentrated country in terms of diverse experiences. Uh, we're not that far from Spain. You know, it's a, it's a kind of a thin country. It's a rectangle. Um, but you can be, you know, from I'm here at the center, in the center of, of, of Lisbon. In 20 minutes, I could be surfing in a pristine beach, right? There's no other port, you know, capital in Europe, surely, where you can do that. But I can also be in 15 minutes or 20 minutes away from here in, in a mountain, not a huge mountain, not the Alps, but you know, a mountain where you can actually have an, a, a deep nature sort of connection. And you have also the islands, I mean, the Azores and, and, and Madeira, which are incredibly beautiful. And you have so many yeah. natural parks. And it's all not that far away, right? I mean, if you go to a country like the US, you to visit those kind of things, you have to sort of go very far, right? In these big countries, everything is so far. And I think we're blessed with, a, you know, a concentration of nature of different kinds. What is it for you? What do you do in your downtime that brings you that balance, that brings you that rest, that brings you that re that, that refreshes you to to carry on with such a busy life and a busy a busy job? I'm 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 with you. You know, I like the simple stuff. I you know I think you know I I love all the new fancy restaurants in Lisbon and everywhere. But I could get that anywhere in the world, really. But I can't get the Portuguese sort of comfort food anywhere else, rather than in Portugal. And so I love going to a very simple restaurant and just having like, you know, grandma style food, which is super delicious. And um, and just hanging out with the kids and just going into nature and surfing as much as possible, you know, only, only on the weekends, of course, for me, but uh, that's not bad at all. And uh, just doing simple stuff, you know, and and it's, um, I think Portugal is, is a country for those that look for a simple, um, but safe, fun, and uh, physically active life. Um, Stefan, uh, I've, I've loved this conversation um, and, a, and a question that we speak, that we ask all of our guests, Portugal, the simple life, why? Because it's authentic um, and because there's nature. I think those are the, those are the, the reasons. Okay. Uh, Stefan, thank you so much. I'm going to let you call it. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. So, thank you once again to our guests and thank you to all of you for listening. Please subscribe, share with your friends, give us a thumbs up, and please leave a comment or a review. We always love to hear from you. Don't forget, Portugal The Simple Life also has a magazine, so download it. It's for free. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And as we say in Portugal, Cesar's being vindo. Welcome to the simple life.